So we've already talked about means of random variables. Turns out random variables also have standard deviations. Remember, again, the way we want to think about this is, we're, is that we're using random variables to model the behavior of populations. By that, I mean think about taking one draw from a population. The random variable then models the behavior of that one draw. So it's like taking a sample of size one. So random variables have means. We just talked about how to compute those. Random variables then also have standard deviations. Their standard deviations are the same as the population standard deviations. We've already seen a formula for population standard deviation. We use a lowercase sigma for that. And it's essentially what? It's uh, you take the sum of all the deviations from the population mean, right? Or well, actually you sum the, the, the squared deviations from the population mean, right? Divide by n, right? The number of things in the population and then take the square root, right? That's how you get the population standard deviation. Also recognize here that this is really like multiplying by 1 over n, okay? 1 over n. Okay, so what you have out here. So another way to write this is in fact if I take that 1 over n on the inside of the summation there, this is like the sum x minus mu quantity squared times 1 over n. Now if all of these values are distinct, if they're all different, if all the population values are different, then this makes a lot of sense to do, right? But remember, multiplication is just a shortcut for addition. Let's revisit the population mean formula real quick, or the mean for a random variable. Remember we said that it's like this, right? It's, it's the mean or the expected value of a random variable x is going to be the sum of all the values it can take on times you know the probability that x takes on those values, right? It's this weighted average, okay, where these, these probabilities are the weights. So let's take a look at an example. If I have a random variable that can say maybe I've observed it at two, five times, and it's been three, ten times, and four, one time, something like that, how can I get the mean there? Well, I could take 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus, uh, gosh, I don't want to write 3 10 times. Remember, multiplication is just a short kit for addition. That's 10 threes, right? So in fact, let me scratch this out, and I'll just put 5 twos. 5 times 2, right? Plus 10 times 3, and then plus 1 4, right? 1 times 4, that's all I'm doing there. And then divide by the total number of counts, 16 counts, because 5 plus 10 plus 1 is 16. So that's 10 plus 30 is 40, plus 4 is 44. It's 44 over 16, whatever that comes out to be, 44 over 16. See what I've done there? If you have the same kind of observation occurring multiple times, then you don't have to add it up that many times. You just multiply. And that's essentially what we're doing here when we're multiplying by the chance, except that you're dividing then through by the total number of values there, right? Because see, hey, look at look at what we've done here. This is, you know, another way to see this is this is that you know I've got a two times five sixteenths plus three times ten sixteenths plus four times one sixteenth, right? The four occurred this proportion of time, the three occurred this proportion of time, and the two occurred this proportion of time. These three things are probabilities, okay? You can think of them as, as that. They're fractions of the whole and, the, and the, they all sum up to a hundred percent. Okay, and then these are the values, okay? So that's really what's going on here. That's how we can validate using this formula for the mean. In a similar way then, when we talk about standard deviation, what if each one of these values in the population isn't equally likely. You know, what if I scratch through this and instead I, I, I want to weight it by, I want to weight it by the probability, okay? The probability that this random variable takes on the value of, you know, little x. Well, then there you go. Now you have your formula, your general formula for population standard deviation or the standard deviation for a random variable then is the square root of the sum of squared differences in the mean weighted by the probabilities, right? So that's where that formula comes from. It's really not so bad. And so this is this is really it in general. This is it right there. So let's do this example here. Find the standard deviation of the number of cups that your coffee professor, I mean that your uh, number of cups of coffee your pr professor drinks each day. In this strange world, somehow again, you know, your your professor is limited to, to four cups of coffee. Not really fair, but we'll keep it at that to keep the example simple. Suppose that two percent of the time he drinks no cups. Five percent of the time he drinks one cup, 15% of the time he drinks two, 35% of the time three, 43% of the time he has four cups. Okay, this is the same distribution as we had in the previous example. If you recall, we already found the mean there. The mean was 3.12, okay? 
3.12. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in that formula, and I'm going to write sigma, or the population standard deviation, or the standard deviation for this random variable, then is I've got a square root sign there. It's the first value that this variable can take on is 0, right? Minus the mean. I computed it to be 3.12, quantity squared, and multiply that by the, the chance that, that, hap that, that the value is 0. It's 0 0.02, right? And then plus quantity, 1 minus 3.12, quantity squared, times the chance that your professor has one cup of coffee. It's 5% chance. Okay, I'm going to bring this radical sign on down because I'm going to be putting a lot of stuff in here. Boy, this is going to be really, this takes forever. Too bad we don't have some kind of a machine, like a computer or something that could carry this out for us. Oh, wait, we do, and we'll do that next. But first, it's important to know a little bit about what's actually going on for a lot of reasons helps cut down on mistakes and also in case you ever need to program a computer to do something then you'll have some kind of idea how this works okay I'll take the square root of all of that stuff so I'll put this into my calculator bring my calculator over here I tell you what I'll do is I'll put all this stuff into my calculator under all the things underneath this the square root and then I'll come back at the end and take the square root okay so let's see I've got 0 minus 3.12 quantity squared times 0.02 plus quantity 1 minus 3.12 quantity squared times that probability weight 5% right plus 2 minus the mean 3.12 quantity squared times 0.15 plus 3 minus 3.12 squared times 0.35 plus finally 4 minus 3.12 squared times 0.43. Okay, what's that spell? 0.9456. Now I'll take the square root of that, radical sign square root of the answer there, and okay. That's, uh, yeah, so 0 0.9724196. And that's units and cups of coffee, okay? All of these numbers have units of cups of coffee, right? The means and also the, the possible values themselves, right? The probabilities, however, these things like this, these probabilities do not have any units, okay? All right, so let's see how we can do this real quick with our calculator. This is... We always do, especially for larger data sets. I'm going to put my data there into a list. I'll go in here and edit a list, right? So you press set stat, stat, and then edit option one. I want to edit a list. And then I'll go up to the name of the list and press clear, right? And then uh, I'll just enter my data there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to enter my data like this 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay, those are the possible values. And in list 2, I'm not going to make use of that frequency list, right? Or relative frequency. So I'll put in 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 0 0.15, 0 0.35, and 0.43. I'm going to press the stat key, and I want to calculate some things. So I'll go to the calc menu, and I've got two lists, but one variable. The variable here is cups of coffee. So the actual values appear in list one. The frequency list is in list two. And then I'll go to calculate. There we go. So the sample mean is 3.12. Hey, we're not really taking the sample. Remember, we're doing the mean and standard deviation for a random variable. Okay. Remember, the formulas for sample mean and population mean are exactly the same. Okay, they're exactly the same. This is the mean. This is exactly what we got. And then look at this. The population standard deviation, 0.9724 and change. That's exactly what we got. Now, notice your calculator doesn't compute a sample standard deviation. That's because it actually does know that we're talking about a population or a random variable here. Okay, the reason it knows that is because we fed it a distribution. We gave it the list of values and the relative frequencies. Okay, so here's your population standard deviation or your standard deviation for the random variable, 0.9724196 cups of coffee.